guess we'll uh, start a pleasure for you. That's my primary next year. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Of the 2018 capital budget. Are we getting down to business already? I feel all warmed up from the previous meeting. Looks like there's something we can do that was where we're going to get credit for. Okay. Alright, so, um, this is previous. This is new to us. Yeah, you've not seen this. So, so, uh, <laughs> so we are pretty much. <laughs> yes, I mean, no, you're, not, you're not being asked for basically. Uh, what we'd like to do is run through uh, a little bit about uh, the types of projects that our departments see on the horizon. Um, and, you know, of course, you know, any questions, go right ahead. And, uh, and then we'll give you a little overview of where these projects, uh, the, the debt service associated with them where they, uh, what it looks like over future time, what it does to our debt service and our payments. Um, so that's it. Uh, the plan from here is if we can um, uh, get some feedback, if there's any questions, we'll answer what we can. If there's things we can't answer, we'll get some answers. We'll come back with a, uh, if there's anything that needs to be revised or, uh, or corrected. We'll come back with a, a new draft of this at the July work session, and then the hope will be to uh, approve this at the July meeting, and we'll have uh, bond resolutions and such um, to be able to implement the borrowing. That's the that's the, the overview, and then uh, yeah, that's it. So, um, so uh, as Brenda might have mentioned, we we met with. Uh, Department heads over the past probably a couple of months, actually, about the time we got us together, and uh, they've discussed their various needs. The way this report, that there's several different versions of a report, but we'll just work with one tonight, um, which I think is easiest. Um, and that is uh, this: this report you have in front of you is a uh, yearly project listing or a project listing by year. And uh, it's then further broken down by departments, so you can see what's happening in each department. But essentially, all of these projects, for example, on the first two, three pages, are all for uh, this fiscal year. Uh, the money would be borrowed, or in some cases, it comes from the operating budget, which we'll explain. Uh, and we would start paying on this in next year's budget. So this, so everything you see here would have an impact on next year's budget, which is obviously important. Um, so that's it. So we'll start with DDW. I'm not, not going to go through every single project. There's a specific one that I might jump over because it doesn't look terribly significant. But you have a question about it, just you know, speak up. So, um, we have a standard project in DPW, which is what we call infrastructure maintenance. Um, for many years, we used to borrow. Um, you know, say, okay. For many years, we used to borrow um, money to do sidewalks and curbs and uh, drainage projects. And the board, uh, at some point, thoughtfully decided to put in the budget a, a total of one hundred and thirty thousand dollars. So that one hundred and thirty thousand dollars is already in the. Uh, operating budget, so there's really no decision to make on that. You made that decision, uh, which is why you see there's two columns. What, the first column is how much of that is to be bonded, and the next column is how much the total project is. So that's why there's differences in some cases. Similar to your paving and the state of Yes, exactly. So pa paving is a very good example. The third project down, uh, we, instead of borrowing 110, 120,000 every year, we uh, successfully convinced you that it was wise to, to move that over to the operating budget, avoid having to pay interest on your debt. Uh, and it's money that you spend 
faithfully, religiously every year. Yeah. So, so I mean, that's uh, I think that's you know kind of a, a big kind of a global view of this. Things that are recurring payments probably should be in the operating budget. And I think that you know we started and the police department is the first thing that you know we bought a car every year. I guess we buy two cars every other year, so that's kind of the way we kind of kept that one in. But you know, it just makes for a lot more sustainable budgets, I think, than you know just kind of throwing things you know into uh, to be bonded, which is obviously a lot easier on the on the annual budget, but it, it's not correct. And it's not always so easy um, to make that transition. Is you can't you can't easily take a project that you're borrowing 120,000 a year for and move it into the operating budget because adding 120,000 dollars, as you know, yeah. so that doesn't always fit so well. So we. We did thirty thousand this past year, and we hope to do thirty thousand in the future. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Lee's too late. Uh -huh. Lee, you missed it. Lee, we already uh, talked right. about it. Really? Uh, that was fast. Like six six o'clock. It was between six and seven. Oh, here. My phone went between seven and eight. I am so sorry about that, guys. Here, here, here. Oh yeah. Actually, Lee, can you get a good background from Jan? Okay, and you can also watch this uh, on demand by Mark, right? I, I gotta see how it came out, because we weren't, we weren't focused okay. too much on the audio, but sure. we'll see. So if you have any questions, my name's in the back, and my email's in the back. Okay, thanks. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Okay. thanks for coming. Yeah, yeah, so... Uh, okay, great segment. <laughs> so there's a good example, the second project down Station Road Sidewalk. It's, it's actually... Yeah, so that's only the State Road sidewalk. That is, um, it reflects how much of it is being uh, borrowed versus how much is coming from the federal government. So, uh, 850 from the federal government. Um, and Larry, by the way, kudos to you for getting that grant. Yeah, I mean, you know, our, our grant writer did a fantastic job with that one. That was, I, I know. People hear me say this all the time that I don't expect to get a grant the first year, especially if it's an aggressive one like this. Uh, I really didn't, and, uh, and same with Hudson View Park, and we got both of them. So she's pretty in tune with what they're looking for, which is great. Okay. Um, so other things you have you have a replacement of a, of a garbage truck, which is a monumental event in this village. <laughs> we generally ride them out 20, 23 plus years, 25 plus years. I don't know how much old this one is, but. Uh, it's pretty old, so... Um, you wash it every day. You so wash it every day. The last 25 years. <laughs> I think it's becoming more and more critical for us to address it and not just let it scoff over as being just a nice kind of talk-talk. We've got to start looking at alternative fuel vehicles or anything with a lifespan of 20 years or 15 years. We've got to start looking now at things... Uh, it should be mandatory for things like pickup trucks because now there are multiple sources of EV vehicles which provide equivalent functionality and performance to an F-150 type pickup truck and has also inverters so that you can plug power tools right into the dumb thing out in the field. So you don't have to be operating gas-powered equipment in the field in many cases. So to me, we have a problem that no one is forward it doesn't seem like anyone is forward-looking on this stuff to really come in and say, you know what, uh, this year I know that there are at least two models of these kind of high-end, not garbage trucks, but pickup trucks. Uh, and by, two, by 2020, every single major American and Japanese and uh, auto manufacturer is promising to have EV equivalent uh, of all of their current models. So the trend is there. And I just think the village has to jump on it because these things are long-term investments, and right now the cost differentials are coming down very quickly. Um, the cost savings are, uh, in terms of fuel savings, are fairly significant, and um, the performance issues are a lot less than they used to be. So, so are so, such things available? So, so I, 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 I started out saying I don't yeah. know about the garbage truck, but. You know, I do know that there are things like CNG garbage trucks and things like that, and they may not be appropriate. But you've got large bus, bus fleets now that are totally EV or hybrid. So things are available. The question is, someone's going to take the time to do the research. And the other part of it is, um, as we found out with the, the parking 
enforcement vehicle. There's major incentives from the state Not one really. to really get into an EV fleet or an alternative vehicle, reduce emissions. And you know, for the village, that's one of our biggest ways of really making a difference. So that's my preach. Yeah, I think it's great. As, as much as you may not think you're preaching to the choir, because yeah. I, I have uh, been consistently open to the idea of the EVs um, when they're available and when they're appropriate. I'm particularly interested in the pickup truck. Uh, I know that there's a there's a uh, there's a brand out there that basically takes a Ford. F-150 and convert it to EV, so that it's of the spec as far as towing and four-wheel drive and all that is is unaffected. I'm waiting for it to be available. We don't have a pickup truck in this particular year, so that's not not an issue. But if, if the next time we do, if it's available, we'll, we'll buy it. I've met with uh, at least one initiative through uh, Sustainable Westchester. They hired a, a firm to, I forgot the name of them now, but... Yeah. Uh, and I raised my hand and met with them, and he was all excited to tell me about everything that's available, and there was nothing that matched up with our fleet, except, you know, we, we, we knew that the parking yeah. officer, enforcement officer wanted to work. Uh, you know, there, there wasn't even a, a viable four-wheel drive vehicle that was reasonable from an EV standpoint to replace any of our four-wheel drive, not, not pickups, but just, you know, the building inspector car, for example. Now, there may be an app, but we're, when it comes time to replace, we'll look at it, for sure. You don't think it would like to have, like, a Tesla? <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't think you'd like to appropriate yeah. that. So. <laughs> but I think, I think everybody agrees that we keep want to do this. I mean, I, I, my yeah. concern is just that... When, when it's possible, and when to keep our eye open, right? And I think that, you know, I, I'm heartened to hear that Larry was actually, did go to that, and... Uh, well, I had came to me, but yes, I raised my hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, the thing is that, this is an observation, also it's obviously, I was thinking about this some, and there could be some arguments, for instance, when the DPW is in them for snowing, snow plow, that there may be some issues, um, although these... EVs supposedly have great torque and everything else, but someone like the Parks Department, someone like the Water Department, they seem to be would be a shoe in for this kind of stuff. So, yeah, when it's available, we'll yeah. Unfortunately, I was looking for it. I don't see where the Water Department right, has. Right, not getting it. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they, they got, got new ones. So they do. Yeah. Well, yeah, they're fairly new, but if, I think if you go far enough along, you'll find it. Okay. Yeah. Well, so I just wanted to and DPW. Yeah, next year. So make room to preach right for each on this one. I'd like to look, just in general, when we're budgeting for a new sanitation truck or a new, particularly on these vehicles, they're not waiting until the truck is actually broken and can't be used. They're they're predicting that within the next year, that that truck, whatever they're using, will be put out to pasture. Right. So the, so the, the way we go about it, especially in DPW, with that they have a, a large fleet of vehicles, is um, you know they they make um, projections about the timing of the replacements. So you're going to see all the way to 2025 here, vehicle replacements in DPW. And again, that's all based on projections. Uh, when it when it comes close, I mean, this sanitation truck, if, if I remember correctly, was probably on here for at least three years. It, it probably just gets pushed. Pushed. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I've been told at this point that they're at the point where the maintenance is, is getting beyond what makes sense. Um, I don't know how old this specific vehicle is, so I'm sure it's in excess of 20 years. So uh, it's so it's time. So, you know, in this instance, you know, it's going to take some time to, to even make this purchase, but from the point you approve this, so they, they wouldn't have this property until the beginning of the winter, most likely. And the same for pickups. They're scheduled, but then when they but then when it comes to the year that we're actually ready to replace it, you may say, I think we can get another year out of it. And, and in some cases, you have to pull it over oh, a year okay. because you know, things are in bad shape. So it's, um, I mean, generally, we push things out. It's, it's they're, they're pretty good with their maintenance. So, um, but it's not, we're, we're not keeping this in here and hoping that sometime during the year it dies and then we have to, we, because it takes, it takes probably four months to get garbage, you know. So you don't know, just go into a dealer. Right. So, um, 
talk about a little bit about the sidewalk tracks and um, that's a, that's a new item uh, on the replacement, right? Yeah. That, well, we've had them in the past. Um, yeah, you're, but they were gone. Yeah, so th so this is we, we don't need the industrial size sidewalk tractor that that we we could have purchased several years back um, before we gave up the maintenance of the sidewalks. Um, this is a, a, a smaller model to help them take care of the properties that we are responsible to take care of, which is in and around DPW and various spots up and down Main Street. Um, so it's really to try to to make their job a little bit easier since um, there's not a tremendous amount of manpower. What happens to the old garbage truck once we replace it? It's old. Well, yeah, we, we, do, we do have one spare. And um, if this one is better than the current spare, this will get pushed down. But. Uh, right, and, but then we sell the one? It gets old, yes. Okay, oh, yeah. that was my question. Yeah, yeah, we, we sell. Anything we sell, in fact, we just had a, a whole batch of equipment that we put out. Uh, we do on an auction site, similar to eBay, but it's, it's for yeah. government purchases, government surplus. And, uh, you know, we, we'll get ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 for some of these things. For the truck? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if we'll get for this one, but but you can, you know. I mean, people want to be useful for parts, and, and maybe there's people that are, you know, willing to invest a certain amount of money to get it up and running. I don't know. Recycling, good. One person's trash is another person's treasure. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. So, and then, uh, the last item there, uh, West Side Side Lane Drainage, that's an example of uh, a project that's in our uh, flood study. It's it's work that the uh, our engineers had recommended be done along West Sunnyside, which is which involves replacing some of the drain lines and uh, replacing some curbing in certain spots. Uh, um, and it, it is part of an effort to reduce flooding in that area. That area has an unusual characteristic in that it's, it's very steep. Um, but we do, so when we do get flooding, it's, it's massively flowing amounts of water as opposed to sprawling, <laughs> spread out uh, type flooding. So, uh, so there's certain infrastructure that needs to be fixed there to, to prevent the various washouts that we've had over the years um, to keep it moving. Now, is this, is, unlike the, one of, uh, the plans of on Barton Brook, which you have to start down the river and move up, right. does this have that kind of logic in it as well? This one, this one was, we were, the engineers assured us that if we start working upstream on on Barney Brook, on uh, Station Road for a Sunnyside Brook, sorry, Sunnyside Brook, that uh, this wouldn't be uh, drastically impacted. So this one could get done uh, kind of out of sequence because yeah. this is downstream, as you know. Yeah. Um, but these repairs, um, we could we could do Hudson View Park before we do this. Um, but if we go any further, and I don't think there are any more repairs, but if, we were, if there were to be, um, you know, this would really need to get done. This is the only other, this is the only other uh, repair job along Sunnyside Road. Mm -hmm. so. And it's on our side, obviously, not on the <laughs> working on our side, yes. Well, no, it's the uh, lines right there, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so, um, I'll just I'll pick off a couple. Firehouse roof, that's a supplemental to, to help pay for getting that uh, completed. Just as a, as a point of observation, um, the bond company basically gave us the entire amount of the bond. I think I might have put that papers in your, in your Friday folder. Um, so we do have that money to work with, but um, I, I believe we're going to need more than that, and that's what this is an estimate at this point. If it becomes more clear, uh, what the right amount is, I'll change it before July, but that's an estimate for now. Is that because the roof is continually to deteriorate, or because there's more things found? Um, I think it's a I think it's a combination, but mostly the second thing. There, there's just more to it than uh, now that everything's open and you know, we've had it reevaluated. Uh, and you have a 40-year lifespan, but. Yeah, it wouldn't be borrowed for that long. It would, that should be changed. Because I mean, we, we are expecting at some point to actually have a way of getting out of that building. Right? Yeah, yeah we, would, we would hope so. But the, the lifespan that's listed there is not 
is not our assessment. Oh, right, that's because the state sets the bond. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's the maximum life that we could we could amortize it over. But we will we'll never amortize something forty years. Um, Twenty would probably be the max. So we'll make that change. Uh, fire fire I mean, they they they've asked. They have they have a fire boat. They're not asking to, to buy a new one. I think they. I don't know if it involves the engines, but they need things need to be refurbished on that, and they've. Uh, they've approached us on that. I can I don't have any more specifics than that to be honest with you. I know there's multiple uh, crew members from different communities than Irvington, right? I mean it's not just the Irvington fire boat, isn't it? Okay. It's the police have this the police have this fire boat's just the fire boat is just oh, shared. Oh is it sorry. Right. Yeah, yeah the police is the one that's the River Towns police boat. Right. Dodge and it stops these things in Irvington. Right. So, so we'd be looking the, for a community. So, you know, with the with the place where this fire boat lived until yeah. the barge, you know, the challenge. Um, what what will happen with where it goes? I don't know. Yeah. I, I know that the the boat club is working with the Army Corps of Engineers and the and the contractor on the bridge um, to to get a repair done. I don't know what permits are needed. We're yeah. we're kind of not really involved in that. But. But the fire boat would be expected to go back to where it was when yeah. that project is done. I mean, yes. there's no other place no. for no, it. It's, it's it's been a good place for yeah. that with the lift and all that. Yeah, we've invested a fair amount of money in the lift and the lift refurbishing. The skeleton of the lift is still kind yeah. of there. Yeah. But, so is this a good time to get it refurbished while the uh, no place. anchorage is under repair? I, I don't know what's good or bad, to be honest with you. Whether it's more beneficial. They, this is this was on their list. Um, you know, I, I suppose you could make that case. I think the boat was still in operation, but out of Tarrytown or, or Sydney Hollow. I think it's Tarrytown. For sure. I think it's in Tarrytown. Yeah. yeah. So one of the, I think it's Washington Harry Boat Club. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, the interior office that we need to replace carpets and painting and stuff like more and more of a lot. It's a time. Yeah, no, it's things have been showing the range. Oh, yes. We did that with those renovations up there. Uh, it's going on 13 years now. I mean, it's, it's a lot. So, what? I was up the Yeah. Would that be a 1% art budget? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> art budget. Yeah, so you spend it on these guys. <laughs> right, on the new guy. The new guy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure, yeah, I'm not sure. He looks like a new guy. Yeah, he looks younger too, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 that's what I wore to the Tony's. Not to the Gatsby's. He's the guy on Broadway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I saw him in a play. <laughs> but the Sunday and Sunday. So Larry, the yeah. uh, shooting range improvements, is that going to be how you think that's going to quiet it down? Yeah, that's actually, that, Interestingly, um, before you got a couple of the recent complaints, uh, Chief had been working on that. Uh, in fact, I may have talked to you, Brian, about it, but anyway, yeah. he, he'd been working on uh, coming up with some sort of a uh, an enclosure there. It wouldn't be a, a full-out building, I mean, not for $30,000, but some sort of a, a, an enclosure that would help uh, attenuate the sound. Like a wall. I, 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 I thought I saw it was something like a Quonset hut, like a, a, like a band shelter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it checks the sound. Yeah, it says the sound. Yeah, I mean, we just have to get some specific. Because that's actually the letter writers. Maybe say, hey, Chief, we're working on this. Like, actually, your capital budget is having money in there. Right. It's actually less money than that. But, but, but that is on the same, this is the first page. I mean, these pages are the coming this year. This year, yeah. this year, 1819, so yeah. we need to know more about it. So we have to put engineering plans, and that's going to take a while. Yeah, well, I, it, may be, it may be a prefab, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, Alex, we'll, 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 we'll find out. Yes, I, let's find out. So the police car obviously is not going to be EV at this point. No, but um, the, there, I have heard of... Uh, locations that have purchased uh, hybrids. Yeah. Um, but again, I have to make. I, I want to make sure that um, that they're spec'd properly, um, and that they meet the specs that we need, which is not unusual, I don't think. 
um, but if they're available. The problem is that the one bid that I looked at, um, actually there's a couple of bids, one of them is Los Angeles. If I'm not mistaken, they went out to bid for a hybrid police rated vehicle, and what they got was a uh, BMW um, hybrid, and the price was enormous. So, uh, you know, I, if, looking at that, I don't think, uh, frankly, we, we would even have the resources to maintain it. Um, so that didn't seem very viable to me. I mean, it's, I'm all about, you know, trying to save a little bit of uh, fossil fuel, but, you know, but to buy BMW rated police cruisers, I don't know about that. So the other thing is um, that's interesting, of course, with the hybrid is that there's no idling. Shuts yeah. down. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. Well, Somebody's right. ten minute idling could right. keep the car warm. Doesn't really happen quite the same way. Right. Yeah. Well, it rotates on or whatever. But yeah. Like I said, if there's a if there's a viable, I have to make sure I always put that word viable in there. Yeah. To me, that's not viable. It's, if you think differently, let me know. But that's, that didn't that's sound right. right. <laughs> that's for the Americans to take on the car. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Can you talk about number five on that list? Yeah. So. Um, the, we need to replace or or something that I think we still can have two of these. We need to replace the speed trailer that we have. It's a, it doesn't function very well. I think it's easy enough to replace one um, with a regular model. The chief would like to have one that is that provides him with license plate reader data for other purposes, not not to be used with a combination with the speeding data. But simply for uh, for data collection, like the other license plate readers do in the in the area that are fixed. Um, so that's that was his proposal. I, um, you know, I, I mean, I get more details on that, but that's essentially where it's going. Is our existing speed trailer is that like someone that doesn't function anymore? Or? It's uh, very clunky. Doesn't function well. It doesn't stay charged um, as well as it should. So. So when we deploy it, it's on and it's not. So. Um, well, it's not solar. I this is battery, or is it solar? Um, no, I think there's a panel on it, but it's, it, I think it's it's not functioning as well as it could. And the new ones, to be honest with you, I I, I was pushing. We have money already for this, so uh, we probably will be purchasing a unit that uh, will have the flexibility to have uh, a small message displayed on it as well. Um, if you. Recall recently when we had the new stop sign go in on uh, East Sunnyside, uh, Greenberg Police put up a variable message sign. It's basically a speed I sign. Yesterday, I saw it. The go into town hall to Greenberg. Oh, they had it out. Okay, they that's right there. Yeah. yeah. So. It says slow down. Right, but it allows, it allows <laughs> you to display a message. In the case, in our in our case, they actually put it up ahead of time before the stop oh, sign went up, and it said stop stop sign installed ahead or something like that. Um, to warn people, so um, I think that's something to that we'll purchase. But this is this would be a second one that is also a license plate reader. So, so the, the, I'm trying to remember the, the issue about license plate readers and speeding tickets is that we're not allowed to do that, right? It's only New York City or someplace. Well, yeah, there's cities. There are oh, only there's cities. Four, there's four cities. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, Although there's, there's new the legislation city. that's just being yeah, just re yeah. that's being passed. So I, I don't know the specifics of it yet. So yeah. if if that were to happen, that the law changed, could we use this piece of equipment that way? No. Is that it's cameras? Oh. No, um, the equipment's actually pretty. Um, it's pretty expensive. Um, for the speed cameras, the, the the red light cameras. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it's right. We're joined. That's the, that's what the legislation is approved has been approved in yeah, other places, but they're considering for what Europe has a lot of speed cameras, speed whatever meters, but they right. don't think they have in the U.S. I think it's only for red lights right now. Red lights, all we have. Yeah. Oh, it's only red lights. Yeah. So this is not. Really? Yeah. There's, there's no. It is a basic. There's a basic. Uh, Process type yeah, yeah. thing. I comes with this. That's just, why there's special yeah. legislation. The red light camera <laughs> ones. If you plead guilty, you don't get points either. You just it, it just you just pay, just pay a fine. Yeah. So is the only one is the money now, which is what the, the tractors are constantly saying. Yeah. So it's it's. it's I mean, just hearing that that discussion earlier about Station Road, which of course you know I know 
but I don't know viscerally the way like Larry does, but the, the way in which that's feeding on that group is so prevalent and we're doing so much with our with our police officer, but it's still such a problem. I'm just thinking if we're spending police technology, you know, how can we find the technology that would help that area it would be that would be the place to do it, I think. I mean, I, just, I, don't, I don't know what it is. I don't want to get into a debate about it. I didn't yeah. want to before, yeah. but um, I understand. I don't live there, and I understand that there are anecdotal reports, but the data that we get back doesn't show a compelling problem. Right. Where are we talking about? We're talking station road, that it's not speeding per se. It's maybe going over the line, or... And, and or it's also... It, it, it's also too fast for conditions, essentially. Yes, right. So, so that's essentially, you yeah, know, so, so doing 25 on Station Road is, is way different than doing 25 on many other roads, you know, because it's so narrow. So, and that's what causes and that's the inability to stay in your lane. Right, know, right. So right. And, and it, also feeds, it also feeds the perception that people are going excessively fast. Well, they are. The data. It, yeah, I, I know. I, it's, I, I it's, know that. it's very I difficult know. because because then then you get into enforcement and you know it would be really unusual. First of all, the speed limit is 25, even though we have it posted at 15, it's technically 25. So you can't have a police officer issue a valid ticket for doing 22. You know, it's just, it's a real catch 22. I think you really have to work on. As much as you can, signage and, and uh, education and I know that's a good ticket for uh, unsafe driving condition. Yes, yes but you could. But it's harder. That's a it's a that's a tough one to win. I mean, well, I did notice that just in the subject, we still have our psychology. We still have a 25 mile an hour sign where the radar sign is. Never got changed to our right, well, I have a list of things that I have with Greg, so I know that I know that there's a list that we went over. So I have yeah. To, so I mean, talking about psychology, right? We well, all the, there. If we can get all of that down, maybe mm -hmm. people stop thinking that the brain, the, that you know, it's a 25 miles. Yeah. Yeah, but well, I know this is off the topic, but when I'm just we're looking at capital budget, and it's just reminding me that we, whatever the technology is out there that becomes available that would help this, and I don't know what it is, it would be nice to invest in it. So well, if we do it, you alluded to it before, any of these data collecting technologies come out oh, brought oh, yes, with yes, issues, yes. and they're, um, this week's New York, a great summary of articles about that, like you can't collect, uh, you can't do heat sensitive, uh, Measurements from outside of the house and then lots of them marijuana growing. I mean, there's just been a raft of lawsuits about this, and we can watch the meters spinning around. Yeah, around so, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, okay, let's go on to the next thing. Okay. Not a police officer anymore. Or a pot girl. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, what else? Okay, so uh, recreation parks. Uh, there's a there's a variety of items here. I, the, the senior center fire escape is, is by far the most urgent. There's just holes in it, and it's, it so that's that's a, that's got to get done for real. Um, the Gator vehicle that they have is in need of replacement. Um, What's the Gator vehicle? Oh, it's a it's a, a it's a four wheeled vehicle that is what it's like a, it's the size of a golf cart. Oh, okay. But it has the it has the gotcha. We see it parked out here sometime, or no, that's not the recreation one. No, that's not recreation It's to be right. used in the uh, Irvington Woods, let's say, on the trails. Okay. No, no it's but the gator they use in the parks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they use... They got a uh, Rocktoberfest, they bring in a lot it's of... It's a utility place. Okay. So, the, so they, it's in need of replacement, and they're, but they do plan on purchasing one that has a slightly larger, larger bed, because it will be more useful. Uh, that's... That's that. Also, the backstop and ball field fencing has been uh, on our list for probably four or five years. We've, we've uh, continually bumped them from year to year. Um, this year, Joe was uh, pretty adamant about the fact that the fencing is requiring more and more uh, repairs. There's, there's places that, where there's pieces missing and there's, you know, vent areas and... Uh, that becomes a safety issue. It's really a safety issue. So they, you know, this is uh, fencing, certainly in Senior Cuts Park, it's been there for 20 years now. Um, and I think that also includes uh, Memorial as well. 
which has been there. I mean, I, you know, I don't remember the last time it was replaced. So that's a need. Um, bulletin boards, it's listed under recreation and parks because Joe has a hand in it, but it's really a, a joint project between Greg in the theater. And uh, and so I think the plan is, is to put two bulletin boards Possibly three if they can fit it, which will be one's a theater, one's a recreation, and the other is kind of a, one that is always in demand uh, by a lot of different groups. Um, the plan is that we're taking that it's a it's a bulletin board that can accommodate two well a one four by eight panel, four foot by eight foot panel. That's a typical sign that you see up there, or two four by fours next to each other. The um, Wayfinding design project that we did did not have a four by eight design. It has one that's smaller, um, like in front of town hall ones that are designed there. Um, so, but they're taking that design and the design manufacturer, the plan is to take that as design and, and turn it into a four by eight without the locking cases. You don't need all that up there. You know, it's like you're doing it in front of town hall. Um, so that's the plan. So they're not just coming up with a design. It's going to be following the wayfinder design. Which I think that's an official color we ended up deciding. Right. The blue. blue. I'm surprised we're not looking at now. I was going to say those electronic billboards, you know, they seem like it's so cost effective at some point, but I'm sure no one would like to have lights. Flashing. No, that's flashing. No, no, I don't. But they. The back lid, if it's a. They're all stiff in front. Well, no, I actually, like whatever they were using, they converted over at uh, uh, County Center mm -hmm. or bright enough to see in broad daylight right there. That's right. But they're bright enough to see in broad daylight. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't. Well, I, just didn't <laughs> say <the word. laughs> well I, 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 I know that this is needed. I mean, when the, the farmer's market needs space and the theater needs space and the recreation needs space and some other thing needs space, and I know it's a constant concern. So, so I think that's a decent investment. But then the tree up there, that'd yeah. be good. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the intention is to try to get through. Yeah, that's the intention, yeah. Um, the fertigation system, so uh, just to explain, in Senior Hudson Park, um, you know, we, we are pesticide free, but that doesn't mean there, there aren't treatments that we use that are non-pesticide treatments <coughs> that right now um, we need to apply them annually, so it takes a significant amount of labor to go around and, and introduce it into the, to the areas that needs, needs to be done. Fertigation system is something that, that works. Um, we actually have it down there, but it, it doesn't work anymore. Um, and it's, the design is very poor. It was put in when the park was put in. It's a, uh, it's a system that works in tandem with the watering system. So it, it essentially introduces the, the, um, the treatment. The ferts at the beginning. <laughs> the ferts at the beginning uh, so that when the grass is watered, that's how it gets applied. So, um, it'll save a significant amount of manpower, so they're they're pretty. I was I was ready to push this one off, and then when I realized that there's this pretty significant labor savings that comes along with this, that it it's a, it would be a good investment. It's not a big number. No, it's not a big, but just to, just to explain. This is just the the physical pump or whatever the system is itself, right? The yes. Regulator. Pump. Yeah, well, whatever it is that introduces it at the right rate and the right time and frequency and all that. Uh, so the last two are uh, maybe a, just a quick explanation on those. The um, senior bus is in desperate need of replacement. Um, we have signed on to the CDBG program, and the, the, the plan is to submit uh, for 50% of the senior bus. That's the most that they'll fund um, if, if we're funded. Um, it needs to be replaced anyway. Which is why they have the full eighty thousand here. Um, yeah, it could be less by forty thousand. Um, the, the twelve passenger transport van is also in need of replacement, and but it, you may be able to get away with one or the other here. Uh, if the senior van, the senior bus gets replaced, they may, they may not be able, they may not need to replace the transport van. Uh, if the bus isn't replaced, they'll be putting more reliance on the on the van. So it's. I'm trying to picture the transport van. 
The bus, senior bus, is the white one. Yeah. The, you get it on the I side. I think the band is green. It's green. Oh, green. Yeah. Oh, looks like it's That's panel. 12 passengers? Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, but they don't, I mean, they use it a lot for transport of, yeah, of not stuff, people. not people yeah, all the time. Okay. But um, if they also use it as a backup when the senior bus is down. So that, that's where oh, these kind of go in tandem here. So um, we're putting both in here for now. They're not big numbers. They could get smaller. That, on one, that one can't get the CBGB because it's not aimed at seniors unless no. you say it's... It's used occasionally, which we'd never be able to. I just wondered about having both vehicles on the same budget cycle. Right. Or if it would make sense to stagger them. It, it could, but what I, what I would suggest is that if, and we can slide it, slide the band down to the next year, for example, and then what will probably end up happening is, is um, if we don't get funded or if we decide not to replace the senior bus, we'll maybe we'll accelerate the van and move the senior bus back. You know, we'll, we'll play around with it. But, so we'll just put one to the other, which makes sense. And alternate vehicles? Okay. If there's a van available, sure. The bus, I don't know about. I, that's a good question about the bus. I mean, there's a lot of hybrid stuff out there now, especially for public transportation. Okay. Good point. Okay, we'll look. Not that I'm expecting Joe to actually have the expertise to know that. But no, someone's no, going to have for him. We'll, we'll find out. Um, and if I have to, I'll ask my contact through Sustainable Westchester and tell me. They should tell me what we're doing something for our contribution. I didn't talk to Greg about the lighting system. I, it's probably the lighting system that controls and hoists. Yeah, that. Yeah. I'm not having more details. I think what I was antiquated, you can't get parts anymore. That's my understanding. It's like a Fuji. Like if they even like the bulbs now, they have to like. Right. That's you right. You can get right. bulbs and fuses and everything. So. Wow. Yeah, I want a few. Yeah, so I would put a penny in there. Obviously, they don't need for replacements, but we'll have to see. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Why not? Yeah. It seems a little more clear, so. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. the issue of the year in which, the, if the um, entrance project goes through and a grant, I didn't see it on the theater, the bigger bigger expenditure for that. Right. So um, I think I've got a place holder. So. It, it's in it's in twenty 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 one twenty two. Yeah. Twenty twenty one twenty two, yes. So I just didn't turn enough page. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty well. Yeah, it's far out. I know. Here's here's the thing. Um not two point five million. That, that is a 100% wild ass guess, okay? That I'm not ashamed to admit it because we don't have our reports back yet. We don't have our feasibility study back yet. So this is a placeholder, but the, the, this is the entrance project. So, and, and by the way, it's it's pushed out to 21, 22, not because I don't feel like doing it by then. I just, it, it, was, it was my estimate of what it would take to pull together the funding for that size project. Could it be sooner than that? Sure. Um, we'll know a lot more after we submit these, hopefully, two grants in this consolidated funding cycle. We'll be learning, but that's, we won't hear about that for another six months, probably. But we'll learn a lot more from that, and then we'll have to refine our estimates. So I, I just don't have enough information to even put anything that, um, you know, uh, is is set in stone, I and mean, it certainly isn't. So that's why it's out there. So it's, there's a placeholder there for it. Uh, we're acknowledging that it's out there. To be honest with you, if, if you noticed, I, I also didn't even put a number that is very big in terms of a commitment on the village side of things. That's going to be the subject of a whole host of conversations that you're going to need to have with your volunteers and people in the community. So I'm not making those decisions. I'm just putting placeholders there. So we're enough years, that's all. <laughs> yeah, that's now I see it. Okay. I, yeah. Look, we can, we can argue about where to put it. I, I just tried to be as reasonable as I could based on what I know today, which isn't a lot. So, all right. Um, so if we, if we, I mean, I know we adjust these things. The ones that are the out years, 
we get just periodically. So if we did get this grant and we did get this, uh, and then the project looked like it was moving faster, that might move up in Absolutely. years. Yes. Totally. Yeah. Plus, we'll have a better idea of numbers and yeah. how much to expect from outside funding. And I mean, the committee hasn't even started their fundraising yet. So. They're writing their letters. <laughs> we haven't got a, a exactly yeah. no, so we're really early here. But at least we have a placeholder, and we'll keep working on it. It's, it's, a, it's a working document. I mean, a, you know. Anyway. Um, <laughs> all right, so just a piece of equipment that is in need of replacement. It's, it's uh, yeah, they use that to, to uh, oh. To pour clean out lines from the blockages and whatnot, so uh, it's it's reached the end of its useful life. Yes. Um, River Road Water Main Replacement Engineering. So, um, as you know, there's been a few breaks down on uh, what we call River Road, but it can be called Bridge Street as well. Um, so, we're doing. We're, we're asking for engineering money to design a replacement of the water main that's down there. Um, we're also, my, my plan, if it all comes together, is to have a working design in hand and, uh, and apply for uh, water funding from New York State. Uh, there's a significant amount of water funds that have been made available in recent years um, through, the, through the state budget. Um, they will fund projects. Um, we're not, it's not the most competitive application based upon the criteria that I saw because we're not, it's, we're not in uh, uh, dire need of, of replacing this main because uh, it's going to cut off the water to a neighborhood or something. I mean, that's not the situation we're in. We're also, that can't function. Well, <laughs> A lot of jobs that are being affected. Tax revenue yeah. sources. Yeah. And that's, and that's, jobs, people that are down there. Right. And so what I'm hoping is that um, I believe that there's a uh, private water line on the, on Bridge Street properties, uh, at least that's what Jimmy believes, that there's a private line there. And I'm hoping uh, that there's a way of uh, refurbishing that to create a loop, which will create redundancy for businesses down there. and. and and, uh, and that they may invest a portion to do that as well, to, to create that redundancy for their tenants. And, and I think that would strengthen the application in terms of kind of a public-private partnership uh, type thing. So we're trying to be creative about it, but the first step is to do the design, because the city board will not fund anything if, uh, if you're not ready to go. And so there's a certain amount of discovery that has to be done, because they don't know if that line is maybe. Uh, he thinks it's there, but what state is it in? Yeah. 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 There's a lot. There's a, some of that we, we we need to talk to them about. Yeah, 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 property, but, um, but we need to do the engineering design just for the replacement of the line that's in the public bridge street, you know, the public line there. Um, so this brings up a different related question I've mentioned in the past, but I'll mention it again so Larry gets to hear it. Um, and I know there's a lot of surprises in terms of the amount of information that's been recorded and what's been, you know, what's been found, what's been lost in the ages. But do we have an age map of the water system for the village, for the utilities in the village? You know, and I know that uh, James had talked about that he has some of that information, but not consistent for everyone. And so that seems to me to be, you know, one of the risk factors. I mean, obviously we've seen multiple breaks in fairly rapid uh, fashion down at Bridge Street, which causes issues when, you know, the businesses, the restaurants are uh, take uh, fairly large losses every time they're out of service. So, 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 so you know, what I'm trying to get at is, you know, I, I know that he's got a lot to try to pull that together, but <laughs> is that is that information sort of forward projected into, not based on the, you know, the leaky pipe is the one that gets fixed, but right. is there some other kind of modeling that's done that says we really got to do this neighborhood at some right. point in time? Yeah, I mean, the, um, you're right. There is not a single go-to source of, you know, the age of the installations of these pipes in one place. Um, there is forward thinking going on, and you'll see that in a project, which is the last one on this list, which is the engineering for the mountain road water line replacement. 
um, you know, that one based upon based upon our assessment of the condition of that pipe um, needs to be replaced. Um, is it has it has it leaked in the last year or two years? I, I don't think it has. But it's leaked in the past, and the condition and the way it was installed on rock and it's it's in bad shape. Yeah, there's been a lot of breaks over the years, so. Um, so there is forward thinking from that standpoint. It's not as simple as saying, well, you know, that line was installed in 1932, so therefore it's scheduled for replacement in 2022. It's not that simple because um, these these pipes, if they were installed correctly, can go forever. <laughs> many, many of them. And when I pushed him on the studio, he talks about repairing the valves. You know, like that's much yeah. more important. Yeah, some of the mechanical things. Uh, you know, but some of the some of the pipes may be, you know, may have been in the ground for I don't know 100 years, and the technology then is much different than now. So in terms of right, could be better built. <laughs> so better. Janice, during our um, Main Street meetings, someone once talked about the condition of the piping coming down Main Street, and that the opportunity to replace that might be an opportunity to bury the other lines right at the same time. Yeah, we've talked about that for sure, that the costs of when you if you were to say upgrade all of your utilities, then the cost of just digging the hole becomes right. kind of the major cost. And if you're gonna dig the hole you might as well fix right. everything was yeah. I think the thought. Yeah I Main Street water line replacement is not on the radar screen. I asked Jim about it. Um, we, the condition of the lines is not a problem on Main Street. Um, we've had, we've, we've certainly had some breaks. We've had, we've had breaks over the years, but they've been, uh, they've been in some cases breaks on service lines. So they were, you know, so it wasn't the main line. Yeah, you know, and so but there have not been significant breaks. Um, you know, things happen with, with with pressure changes and things like that that can cause problems. But it's not it's not a I don't think you're gonna see a recommendation to replace the main street lines from top to bottom anytime soon, probably not in our lifetime to be honest with you. Um, the the mountain road one is because of the the topography, because of the rocks and yeah. the and it, and it wasn't as all that might have been in the 20s the, or the 30s. It's not, it's the, not that old line, no. Oh, no, really? Oh, 60s. Oh, 60s. Oh, also, 60s. Oh, you do anything well in the 60s. <laughs> yeah, but there's other, there's other lines. Yes, yeah, they don't run, it doesn't run only down Mountain Road. There's other lines that cut through the woods. They'd be going to the reservoir. That go through the tanks. Those lines are fine. Okay, well. So, this is a... Mountain roads is a very, you're, you're going to see later on, after, we're not going to go through it tonight, but you'll see as you browse through this that there will be a very large project to replace the mountain road water tank, the more water tank. It's $2 million plus, I imagine. Um, but we, we have to get started on the design process otherwise. And, and, and then I need to look for funding, which is going to be exceptionally difficult for that particular line because it doesn't serve a lot of people. It doesn't serve an underprivileged neighborhood. It doesn't serve. It, it's not a threat. It's not a threat to their potable water supply. Although it's an inconvenience, certainly to have water lines break. But let's come up with a security. Maybe it's right on the border between urban. <laughs> yeah. Something we can, we can figure out. But, but it's not the easiest and most fundable project. Well, where is this guardrail at Reservoir? It's about the as you go. So, yeah, I believe there's pieces of it there uh, along Field Point Drive and where the reservoir is, and I think he wants to extend that uh, for security reasons. I think. So, so when you're when you're going up, uh, Cyrus, Cyrus, you see that little, yeah. little building, there. little building around there. Yeah. So let me, you know what, I, you know what, I'll find out okay. the details and send it to you because um, I can't, I can't recite exactly where it's going to go. So for the outlook from years that did blue change, do you have like maybe one or two highlights showing the highlight? Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah no, not, no, I wasn't going to go through maybe three. You don't have to worry about that. Um, you know, we, we should pick those Yeah. Yeah, there's plenty of opportunities in the future. Um, 1920, there's uh, renovations to Matheson Park that have been talked about for years. Um, the, uh, let's see. 
What was the tube? It was, was it in the tubes or was it for the... Take a look at it. Yeah, either way. It was probably, let's say, 2.5% maybe. Uh, but that's for long-term, you know, 20-year 20, 20 bonds, mm -hmm. you know, for permanent, permanent basis. So that's yeah, kind of... It's, it's still kind of historically well, you know, like until yeah. you get kind of, you know, about 7% probably. So, you know, it's going to be the next three years, I think, you expect rates to go off. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but I wouldn't say... If, if what you're getting at is, is you know, do we accelerate projects now to borrow while rates are low, um, you know, you could certainly do that on an individual project basis, but but the more projects you you start, the more the, the interest is the least well right. worries. It's paying the principal. Right. That's the problem. Right. The whole, and, and just based on the next couple of years, you know, it doesn't look like we want to yeah, any more than we do. Yeah, we're not going right. all in on this. Yeah. So, so we we don't um, we, we don't we don't have enough projects that we to, to be able to play the interest rate market. You know what I mean? So we, we we just we're pretty steady as we go. If this um, is adopted, our total uh, amount in bands we got seven million. Right. So it's getting up. And, and we'll probably be issuing permanent financing pretty soon, maybe this year. Um, once you're over 10 million, the, the van market gets a little yeah. different than canned or whatever it is. All right. All right. Um, oh, Maybe it's a separate shoe. Yeah, exactly. Little people, low zero. <laughs> um, for the next, first, I have to call Marianne. I want her to come over um, so she's here at the right time. But um, she's gonna, priorities. She's gonna meet priorities. Us. Do you? Yeah, right. Do you? Uh, what was attached to the agenda was the unmarked version. Do you want to work with the marked version, or you okay? Or not? I have a marked version here. I want to take it. Let me just make a quick call there. I can make this one. Oh, it's too small. Oh, it's too small. Sorry. Oh, it's bad. What you can hear is good. I hear you saying better. What? I can't say. I could not hear the. The engineer, like the younger, blonder one. I think their average age was at 26. Yeah, I know. But I'm saying he was even younger. Even younger, yeah. That's. Yeah, we're just getting started on priorities. You know, we have the. All right. Can we consider listening devices for this room? Yes, I'm just about to say. Yeah, I think we have. Sorry, actually. Yeah, we're looking at it. It's not a big. I don't think it's a big expense. Oh, no, we just have to identify what assets we are. And make sure it integrates with the audio system. And especially because this is also the courtroom. So it's. Right. I think there ought to be a grant for that for court. People in the courtroom? Could be. Access? Why wouldn't that be covered? No, could be. Yeah, there's a justice court grant. We can look at the instruction to translate. But of course, before you decide, you'll have to know what you're going to do. I have one. It works with mine. Most chats. Right. Yeah. All right. So. Um, yeah. Okay. Can you you, so the, you, the you just basically put in the ideas I, that you got, right? From. Yeah. I I, yeah. I responded to yeah. the well. There was a change. Right. Yeah. I incorporated what I could. There was a couple that I was unclear about, which we can talk about. But. Um, uh, yeah. But other but. Hey, I'll, I'll bring up the. Um, I'll bring up the ones that. I was not able to address to see if you can add some color to it. Um, first of all, okay. So if it's, if it's on the black, if it's in this one, then you figure you got it, you understood it, and you put it in. Yeah. yeah. So it's there. But the other ones are the ones you're going to talk about. Yes. Okay. When there's other comments, we'll pick those up too. Um, Where are you starting at the top? 
Well, no, I have I have a little list of the, the emails that went around about comments. I am sorry to remind everyone that we have a very full agenda with my man. Yes. Yes. So when she comes <laughs> over, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap this up. Right. Yeah. 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 Fill it. I yeah. think it looks yeah. fine. The first. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, all right. so, so the final version that you said about was impressive. Yeah. It's really captured. Okay. Well, but there's some that I did. Oh, okay. 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 All right. So, um, the uh, Larry asked about how to characterize where we stand with the police union. I left it the same because I, I think it's still accurate, but I don't know what else, like, I don't know what other color to add to it. Which number is that? Uh, the number, uh, uh, revised, not, yeah, number three in the first area. I just received a four request from them this afternoon. Okay. So uh, I don't know whether there's I mean, I guess my only question was it's still considered a collective bargaining agreement even. Yes, it's, I think it's not. It's it changes. It could change day by day. So I don't know that it's worth it to keep the wording up here. I think this this is sufficient. Is my point. I mean, it's still a collective bargaining agreement. How you get a new one is the issue. Right. So it's completing the process. Yes. No matter how. Whatever that process happens. Whatever that process entails, even if it right. might be the perfect process or the one we would prefer. Right. Right. So I, that's why I didn't do it. Yes. That. Um, okay. So. Uh, Larry also had um, consider upgrading of the long-term initiatives, paragraphs one and seven, to improve board oversight of committees, boards, and departments. So, um, I, I, I think maybe some of the numbering might have changed in, in, in what I yeah I'm not confused yeah so yeah. It, it, well the one the one that I deleted. Number one, the previous number one under long term goals was to implement changes to operations, technology, yeah. policies that will upgrade. Right, so that's what I was so talking about. I had right. Yeah. So then the old number seven was perform long term departmental planning, including periodic reporting to board trustees. Right. So I was just, I mean, in my mind, you know, I just felt that. There might need to be more, more defined oversight or more defined roles that the board has in, in, in working with the departments and whoever their liaisons with. Um, maybe just a bit, you know, I think I mentioned this before I even started, you know, perhaps just a better definition of what liaisons do um, and perhaps. A, you know, not to make our workload any more than it already is, but but perhaps some kind of, of report by liaisons to the board about. No, not look. It's all well and good that I read an email that I get from Joe. You know, that says what's going on. You know, on a by by monthly basis, but you know, maybe something a little more in, in depth. You know, either the you know, joint report or. Um, you know, just to more oversight. Okay. And I didn't, I, you know, I haven't worded it any better than I would have written. I do want to say, though, in reference to that, just quickly, I know that there have been a couple of times in regards to the land use boards where we've taken action because things have come forward either from a liaison or from another trustee or being, being aware of a situation. That needed to be addressed. So that's not a, a functioning department, but it's another right. aspect. Of well, you know, you know it's not casting aspersions, but for the farmers market to be able to commit to spending that for something that we probably would have approved had it gone through the role the roles, but you know, we're told that's the fact. Brian and I and Larry and Brenda were aware of that, but. Um, yeah, it wasn't the rest of the board wasn't. So, what? But the rest of the board wasn't. Yeah, right. True. So. I think I did mention it, but I don't think I mentioned it like a big deal. But, um, or maybe Brian mentioned it. We talked about it. Anyway. You're right. It's, but now I understand the point. Yeah. I, it's, yeah, it's a question. When we have our little reports at the end of those meetings, and the question is, how much does everybody want to hear about theater meetings I've been to, or this, or the thing you've been to? 
But I think it's, also, a, little, I think it's yeah. a little different. I think, yeah. but I think you had made the point, too. It's one thing about appointing, about reporting on what's coming up or results of meetings or whatever. Right. But another thing is just kind of how it's all working, right? Like patients. Yeah, exactly. I, I talk. It's not the general news, but it's more like oversight of the process. Right, like, exactly. Exactly. Like the way that we've been pushing to try to get less paper into the planning board and the ARB and all that, and you know, the need to get those folks to get into a room and settle the issue. So, so I guess the way I've seen that is if something is a, a, a problem in functioning, you know, it might be something I talked to Larry about is the administrator saying, I, you know, I noticed this, you know, is this something we need to do something about? And then if it's like a, a problem or it's, you know, we, we, we do this, we take care of this. So I, at least that's the way I view the, the whole thing, to, to bring things up that you notice. Um, and also, you have occasionally identified an, an issue in one of the departments and brought in whichever was the liaison. Right. Right. And I think to the, the, the liaison signs are so varied, you know, from, yeah. you know, kind of farmer's market. Right, like doing it's complete different. Right. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's hard to, I, I think I can understand, like, you know, some kind of standardization, but there's also a lot of them don't have anything. Uh, right. They really is not to some board that almost never meets or whatever. But from a practical standpoint, and this is just from my years of observation, it's also varied on how the trustee approaches yeah. the assignment. Yeah, 100%. So, there, so there's, yeah. and, and a lot of it is not based on, it's, it's not just, oh, I don't feel like doing it, because obviously you ran because you're a public service, you, you wanted to do this, but it's a function of the practical aspects of it. I mean, if the only night that the Recreation and Parks Committee met was six o'clock on a Monday night, you'd probably never be there. You know, I mean, and you know what I mean? Like, so it's a function of their work schedules. And yeah. like, yeah. I mean, we've had trust, trustees that work in Manhattan and they, they don't go to library board meetings, you know, or whatever. So, so maybe they're assigned to the wrong. Right, I mean, but it's, it's just, it, it, you take on a different role, you know, it's just a, Yeah, but also, but, but the end result is that, but, Designship, you're assuming that you're accepting a responsibility. Right. So, I think that, so if, you know, if the rec committee meets when we're meeting on a Wednesday at a work session, which they might even be meeting tonight for all I know, right. I'll still find out from Joe what went on at that meeting yeah. and I'll be with them on my own time to find out what right. went on. Um, because you've got a responsibility for doing that. Yeah. Um, but no one's ever, like, I never had a list of what my responsibilities are as a person. But you're proactive. Sometimes. Yeah, we are. are. And you're smart, so you, you exactly. make decisions about it. And I think in some cases, if, if there's if there's some direct communication either to Brenda or to Larry, I mean, there's a way in which the issues come up or get expressed somehow to somebody, it, it, if needed. I mean, there are library things. I mean, the library director comes to the department head meeting. I mean, she doesn't necessarily have to go to Janice and say, oh, yeah, you're going to the meetings. I don't yeah. all of them. But yeah, most yeah. And, but, but even so, that that could happen by a different group than the liaison. And nothing stops Joe from coming and talking to Brian. Or, so I think there are kind of multiple ways in which the communication happens. Um, well, why don't, why don't we, rather than yeah. um, rather than decide exactly how it should get improved, why don't we say that the the, the, go, the goal here, and, and, and I don't know if you want to keep it in the long term, we can debate that, but the goal would be something along the lines of um, it, improve the, the reporting and communication with the departments to assist with their long-term achieving their long-term goals. I, I don't know. You know what I mean? It's uh, taking a little different angle. Yeah. That's, that's good. I mean, I'll, I'll re I'll, why don't we do this? I'll, I'll write something. You can take shots at it offline. And fine with whatever. So, OK. All right. Um, the, hold on one second. There's one more I want to. No, I think that's it. Those are my only things that I couldn't couldn't change. Um, so I, I just wanted to point out, and um, 
before we get on to any of your other comments, that the um, the goal regarding uh, up using technology and updating efficiency is something that um, that I recommended moving up to the, an area of primary focus. Um, and the goal is uh, the real focus of the goal is to uh, to to work to analyze our operations and come up with ways uh, that make the delivery of the services to the residents more convenient and efficient mm -hmm. for the residents. You're talking about number seven. Yeah. Um, and, it, and not necessarily, it, it may be something that saves us money. It may be something that's more efficient on our side. It may also not be, but, but at least analyze those areas where it can be more efficient and more efficiently delivered. Um, to the to the residents' schedule as opposed to our schedule. Right. So I just went to a conference where they, they described it as moving the friction yeah. right. between you know for us it's between patients you know right. make it easier to make an appointment for yeah. patients right. make it easier yeah. to let them know their right. requests right. 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 that's all getting done by text messages. Right. I mean, is it a new process that your office has to learn or, or our offices yeah. have to learn? Yeah. They weren't happy on Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, I think that's very good to look at forward. I mean, it's, we are public service servants and we're here to try to make life good for our residents and the whole different ways in which all this happens now. So, we want to be on top of it. Any other uh, comments? I think we're through and then we'll, we'll take too long. On the, on the very top uh, bullet item list, I thought comprehensive planning and review, that seems to be mis in the wrong tense now, we've done a comprehensive plan review. We've done it, you know. Which, where are you reading? Oh, right. comprehensive plan. Yeah. For the physical year of beginning. It's more like it's implementation. Right. right, it's more like implementation. Right. Right. Yeah, well, that's really number eight. Uh, exactly, and that's why I'm saying. That needs to get moved up. That's why I'm yeah. saying that if it's it's no longer a review, now it's do it. It's implemented. You know, it's. Right, so yeah, it's no, right. I was just wondering what document you're reading. You're about, looking, I this, is the one, this is your one you sent out. Oh, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry, you're looking at the very top. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Top oh, oh. Yes, yes, yes. That just wasn't updated, I don't think. Yes, you're right. I just think that the, the tense of it yeah. needs to change. You're right. I didn't even look up there. <laughs> so, <laughs> which we were just, I'm trying to go really fast. Number seven, which we were really just talking about, I thought uh, technology and policies, policies that will improve sustainability, efficiency, and delivery. I was just putting the sustainability in there because there's things that we might do just because, for instance, the whole notion of putting the comparative water usage onto the bill. We're working on it. I don't know. I know, I know, but, I know, but to me, that's a, not an efficiency. It's not anything. It's really a sustainability. It's an educational thing for the public to be able to understand if they've changed. So, yep. Uh, so number eight, we already talked about that it's, uh, okay, number two, ongoing initiatives number two, I thought, um, should we mention the route mapping corridor project at all? Sure. That's number two. I'm, I can give you this red line. Uh, and then you had some bullet items, and I thought one of the things you said, uh, uh, complete the installation of enhanced crosswalks in Rockland, work with First in College, Metro Nose to complete the sidewalk. And one of the other bullet items I thought was, we've really been focused on is trying to figure out how to look at crosswalk technology for our for Main Street, to see what we can do there. And even though we don't have a grant for that per se, Right. It seems like that's been a focus. We've talked quite a bit about do those blinking lights work? Is there something else? Sure. You know, so to me, I have this thing okay. about, I think it's still in there, about looking at all the aspects of the uh, streetscape plan. It's in there. Oh, okay. It is, yeah. Okay. Um, and then you had number eight under that ongoing initiatives implement a system performance review for all departments to encourage active two way feedback. A lot of these things, I just wonder, do we need to? Should there be a by date type of thing? A couple of these things keep occurring every year, every year, and yet they don't fall off the, even if they're in the ongoing or primary area, they don't have a closure date. So that's always. Maybe we just need to look at this more often. at least once 
you know, like in the middle of the year. I think it was like once when we automated it. We I know, and then we don't look at it. That first week, I look at it carefully. Yeah, yeah. Like that. yeah so, I mean, that was when I, um, <laughs> I, know, yeah. I look at it. Look at what's in red. Well, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, you're supposed to look at what's in gold. That document is formatted exactly to yeah. follow this. Right. So, exactly. Um, no, it's, it's, uh, however you want to do it. Yeah. Maybe the quarterly review of it. Like this, the, yeah. first, the first, uh, Just the first, the first session, session of the month. We did, you know, we spent 15 minutes going through and seeing. Because I, I know I for help. You know, the more I get a report, the less I look at it. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do it. Not specially. Yeah. Well, so, I mean. I thought number one, update process for building preservation permits and site approval. That really should not be a long-term goal. That should be a that should be a primary focus or an ongoing initiative. We need to get that done. And I know it's it's more like ongoing than anything else. Yeah, know? I put it in ongoing. Because there are improvements that are made, but this long term to me makes it sound like we can keep making excuses for it not to happen. Even though it happens incrementally over time, to me it's more ongoing. Number five, the community expands any other regulations of purchase of loud water and income fair. Isn't that already part of the comprehensive plan process? And we have support for affordable housing elsewhere at the top. To me, it's so item, item number uh, five on long-term goals. Yeah, that's specific. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it has to be left down. Not more specific. Mark's just questioning whether it belongs on here or whether it's already covered elsewhere in terms of both the comprehensive plan and the other thing about affordable housing opportunities, which is somewhere right. It's in the uh, overall goal. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's up to fiscal year for the next four years. Oh, okay. So we can't hear. Not even funds to the meeting, but it's just it's getting worse. So are you questioning whether that why that's there? Oh, or no, just it was already a, it was already included in the update you know, in enact enact the comprehensive plan. So that it's a repeat. That it's a repeat from somewhere else, and it's already included and stated, basically because we have the comprehensive plan that was um, line. Okay. I was just trying to reduce uh, the numbers of those yeah. things. Right. Uh, we'll, we'll keep it in. Number six was. Uh, I'd rather overstated than understated. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, uh, we've already talked about it in terms of looking at technology. In the planning process, number six, uh, you're probably talking about in terms of technology elsewhere. Um, I'm sorry, six in the long term goals? Yeah. The problem oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mental planning, and I just said, you know, specifically, we, we have to make sure they're tracking what's, you know, there's a lot of enabling technologies coming along that could make departmental jobs. Right, that's captured in that first hole. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Can we take that one out because it's. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send around. That's the one that's going to get revised okay. based on our first discussion that we had about improving communication and all that. Oh, right. Right. <laughs> all right. All right, that's good enough. Okay, the only thing I. Unfortunately, I feel like we've lost, we've lost the initiative to try to look at. Uh, Things like microgrid up here again. I wish we had something like that yeah. that has a long-term goal and we're trying to. That, that's that one not not from the main street street, uh, streetscape that couples it with so many things, but it seems to be like so elusive, monumental, chaotic, <laughs> exotic. Um, one other thing that's not really out here, but yeah. just a, a reminder: um, we want to enact a law so we can uh, effectively enforce the sidewalk clearing. I had a reminder to do it in June so we can do it over the summer before we get it. You mean a fund for, for not doing the yeah. Yes, right. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to give it to Larry for the profit of meeting. We're going to cover the dump truck. Does anyone have a on this list? 
something related to Checker's parkland description and perhaps an overall review of, of the park rules, or is that really something that can just get worked on outside? I that as a short term goal, maybe. I mean, it's kind of unknown, so uh, I think it could be added. I think it's important because if people know that we're trying to do something to protect our maybe under that land use and infrastructure project. Yeah, yeah, park rules. Where is that? Which one is that? Silver, gray. Land use infrastructure. Yeah, but it's at park rules. I'm just saying it's about that. Good. 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 Glad you brought that up. This one is where it's that when there's a long line. So we still can't play baseball. This one is where it's at. I will make a motion to adjourn. I got a second. All in favor? Aye.